Hi, and welcome to another episode of Tech Talk Travel. We're coming today to you from WTM, London, 2019. And I've got here with me the two founders from Atomize, who are based out of Sweden. Alexander or Alex? What do you prefer? Whatever you like. Whatever you prefer. But Alexander okay. is nice. Alexander, yeah. fine, and Leif. How are yeah. you guys? Nice to have you here on the show. Thank Great you. To be here. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Guys, I've always, as I always do, I start with backgrounds and, and how founders of companies got to where they are and what their motivations were. So what, first of all, let's start with your backgrounds and what your motivations were to come together and start Atomize. Alex, let's start with you perhaps. Uh, yeah, so, so I think a good starting point is to, to distinguish the differences between me and life. Yeah, there are many differences, uh, which is probably the reason why we work so well together, so good together. Uh, so I'm an econo economics major background, uh, yeah. international business and sales and business development mainly. Um, so, so that's my background, both, both in terms of academic background, but also in terms of uh, working background. Uh, and Leif, you have something else yeah. in terms of background? Yeah, I'm a tech guy, uh, so I studied uh, computer science and uh, yeah, started my first company straight after school. Right. So yeah, that's my background. And the whole reason that we sit here today, I mean the background to why did we start Atomize is that in 2002, and that's a long time ago, I started another company called Admeta that did optimization of online advertising. So you could see of it as a revenue management system for online publishers, like Sky News here in the UK. If right. you went to their website, it was my previous company system that was selecting which ad did you get to see, which ad did Alex get to see. Right. And then we sold that company in 2014 to an American company, and at that point in time, we had never lost the benchmark. We always beat the competition. And then two years later, I got a call from the guy that was the chairman of the board in my previous company and said, Leif, do you know that pretty much every hotel in the world, when they set the prices, they do it manually. I said, look, you know, you must have misunderstood something. There's no way in hell that, that, that they can solve it that way. And I said, that's how it is. I said, okay, I'll tell you what. I trust you very much, but I'm dead certain you're wrong on this uh, thing. Let me go out and meet a few hotels myself, and I'll call you later. So I went out, met some hotels, and it turned out he was right. So 95% of all the hotels in the world, they use gut feeling when they set the prices. So I called him up and said, yeah, you were right. Let's start a new business. Let's start Atomize. Okay. So that's the background. And, and, you know, selecting the right price for a visitor or... Uh, selecting the right ad for a visitor, it's the same type of problem. Sure. It's about maximizing the outcome from a stream of opportunities with imperishable goods. If you select the wrong ad, that money is lost forever. Yeah. If you select the wrong price, that no matter if it's too high or too low, you know, that money is gone forever as well. So we started Atomize and uh, I picked the smartest brains from my previous company and started this company. Right. Yeah. And Alexander, were you with Leaf previously as well? Yeah, so, so it was interesting. That was how we met because okay. uh, uh, that company called Admeta back in the days and, and Admeta was a prospect in my, in my sales role back then. So I actually uh, had them on, on the list and I, I had a sales meeting with with Admeta, where Leif then founded this company. And uh, after 10 minutes, uh, the CEO at Admeta told me, yeah, like, you, 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 don't, you can stop your sales pitch now, because we will never buy whatever you are trying to sell. And I was like, oh my God, what, what am I doing here? But what we want to do is to recruit you. <laughs> so yeah. That was 10 minutes after the, uh, the sales pitch, which was a great thing, because then I, so that was my first, so when I started to, to know uh, Leif and, and the crew, uh, this was back in 2011, and then uh, I think it was like nine months later, I became the was appointed as the CEO for for Admeta, mm. uh, and then we took it to to an exit, right. uh, and then so so when when Leif phoned me up, uh, which was in uh, sort of July 2017, 17. yeah, uh, he phoned me up saying like yeah so so we we have a new journey we need to do together. Uh, it's called Atomax, and so and he told me about what you just mentioned here and the story, and 
I just like took me yeah, immediately, immediately I said like yeah we, we need to do this so uh, and I haven't looked back ever since yeah it's been a great ride so far I bet it has. but it's I mean, obviously you're both bringing into the roles or to the company now previous startup experience yeah. so in some ways that also perhaps would give you an advantage to others who haven't got that experience starting a startup would you agree absolutely I mean the first time you run a startup you will do thousands right. and thousands of mistakes yeah, you like know life, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, so I mean this time the second time we hope to avoid the biggest mistakes at least yeah. of course we will still make mistakes yeah. 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 So we apply a lot of that experience yeah. from the previous company to, to optimize because we can relate so many things that we oh if this would have been our previous company we would have sort of done this and yeah. but now we so we can avoid those mistakes yeah, yeah. Uh, but I think one thing that that worth mentioning here is also about why we, uh, we think we have something we know that we have something that is unique also is the fact that in the previous company we we uh, never lost one single benchmark uh, yeah. during those 12 years and then we also including Google's competitive product at that time so it was, I mean, that company was on, 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 on fire, simply. And, uh, and all that heritage, in terms of uh, technical heritage and, and optimization uh, heritage, goes straight into to Atomize now. So, so that's why we could start it so fast and, and been, been, I mean, we've been in operations commercially since, I would say, March 2018, actually. Uh -huh. uh, only. But already in, in more than 40 countries. So, I mean, I have to, yeah. to be able to do that, I mean, with everything, the heritage is, is very important to understand. Well, you lead to my next point now. I was going to ask you, what's your global footprint now since you've been in operations and since you've off the ground? How many hotels do you have running and what's the, the spread of the, the installation base? Yeah, so we have, uh, in this business, uh, as fragmented as it is in terms of the different connect connectivity, uh, you obviously need the EFPMS integrations. Yeah. So, uh, so we have approximately those integrations we have uh, have crossed quite recently more than 100 onboarded clients, hotels. Uh, but we have more than 200 signed up. Oh, yeah, excellent. So it's uh, and it's I mean just this morning it's been like three three or four signups uh, this morning. Yeah. Uh, well, WGM. Yeah. Yeah. This is the first time here, but it's it's, it's a great show. Yeah. And when it comes to your, let's talk a little bit about the integrations because historically for a lot of startups that's a real challenge, yeah. especially into the PMS because that data is quite realistically the gold of the hotel. Um, how have you found that process coming into it? I'm sure it's been difficult as the technical person. What's what's your experience around that, Lee? It's time com time consuming for sure, yeah. and uh, a lot of PMSs have you know, really legacy APIs. Some are very modern and up to date. So it's a huge difference in, in you know, tech level yeah. between the different PMSs. Yeah. And uh, so, but, but usually the actual integration is quite quick. What takes a lot of time is understanding every single piece of the data. You know, in our line of business, you really need to understand every single number that is provided to, to you and you know what's behind those numbers yeah. if we see a rate for, for a room you know is it with or without VAT for instance or tax or city tax or what's included in that rate because if we don't understand that it's impossible to, to, to suggest you know better pricing you know it's a very simple case of shit in shit out so yeah. Yeah. so the actual integration is usually rather quick but the uh, data assurance, uh, the quality assurance of the data, that takes a lot of time uh, for the first couple of customers within the new PMS. Yeah, right, right. That's also one of those things I think we can we learn from, from our previous companies that uh, data quality is everything. And that mm. means that uh, when, we, when we have hotels approaching us that want to work with Atomize, we actually disqualify approximately 20 to 25 percent of all hotels really? due to the fact that the quality is not up to standards. Right. So I, I think where, where others would say like, yeah, let's go with us and, and try it out, we actually disqualify early on. And okay. I think that also is part of the, or I know it's part of the success of Atomize because uh, that's why we can provide such a great uplift right. uh, because we don't accept everything. Right, uh, right, right. Well, I think it's a good idea. For the hotels that are watching this, what's the criteria? Like, well, how do you rate that? Yeah, I mean, make sure that, that, that your data is kind of sorted, that you have some kind of system to your data. And, you know, we bump into cases where we see, 
this room was sold for 10 euros. Then we call them and ask, what happened here? Yeah, you know, it was my cousin com coming over. All right, fair enough. But, you know, mark them with a special rate code that, and then tell us whatever is on that rate code, disregard it. You know, it's not part of the ordinary data. Right. That's a simple solution to right. your cousin, cousin coming over, for instance. Yeah, yeah. But they can't go, sorry, sorry, I don't mean to interrupt you. They can't go back historically and change that information. So essentially what they would have to do is moving forward from the point yeah. They'd have to get make sure the data moving forward is clean. Yeah. Do you have a, a time frame that you say, okay, clean the data up for the first, say, three months or the next three months, and then we can have a conversation? That's usually what, what happens. Right. So, so another angle to what Leif just said about uh, corrupt data, history of data, is when, when we see uh, hotels that have have a tendency to change rate codes every second month, and, yes. and they are adding rate codes, and they have you know, 1,500 rate codes and, 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 and stuff like that. So, so, so the tip of the day would be to be consistent, yeah. have a theory about how you, the rate code structure, how it should look like, and play accordingly. I mean, play with that rate code structure uh, for a long time. I mean, yeah. rather than just keep on adding rate codes and stuff like that. Yes, yes, that's also uh, quite... Um... Yeah. But, uh, yeah. yeah. So but we, we uh, usually say that we need at least three months of, of historical data. Uh, and then even if you have that with three months of historical data, you usually put in something called priors into the system, so helping the algorithm. Since we're applying the, the latest technology in machine learning, uh, meaning that it learns from not only the history, but also I mean, needs to look into the future to, to adopt to, to the future. Yeah. Uh, if we, even if we have limited of historical data, like three months, then we can input priors to help it. So, like saying, like this is what they expected uh, expectancy in the market, for instance. Uh, that's going to be a low season or high season. Yeah. Help it out. So yeah. it's interesting. You mentioned machine learning. It's kind of coming into my next point. Um, predictive learning or predictive or predictive analytics is really becoming now a, a very important part of any business, especially the hotel business, and of course machine learning and AI and all of that. How's Atomize adapting, or how have you, or how do you create your product around that to support that process moving forward? And the second question: How do you see? the future lying out for a hotel. What do you think is the balance or the ratio between machine and, and human when it comes to the yeah. technology and, and setting their rates or managing their rates? Yeah, so in terms of setting rates, I would say down the road that will be 100% done by machine. Right. Yeah, because there's no way in hell that a human could, could do a good job at setting rates because you know, the world is happening in real time, right? So the world is changing in real time. It means that you're basically shooting at a moving target. So if a human is, you know, going to set the rates, by the time you've done your analysis, the data is old, the world has changed. So you cannot keep up to, uh, with the pace of the world, really. That's one aspect. The other aspect is the sheer scale of it. I mean, if you have five different room types, you sell a year into the future, I mean, that's like 2,000 price points that should be up to date. And, you know, if you want to update those uh, once per hour, good luck with that. I mean, you would have less than 0 0.5 seconds per price point to do your analysis. It's absolutely impossible for a human to do good pricing. It's, uh, it's not possible because of the nature of this problem. So the pricing will be done by machines, but the humans should focus on the strategic part. Because the strategic revenue management is not a problem well suited for machine learning. Machine learning is fantastic at setting prices, but the strategic part, there's a lot of creativity to it, a lot of gut feeling, etc. That cannot be replaced by a machine. So, you know, my prediction is that the future revenue managers, they will focus pretty much ex exclusively on, on strategic revenue management. Yeah. So it's essentially the strategy should always come first and then the technology in then to support the strategy yeah. and execute the strategy if you like. Yeah. But there still is a requirement for a human element to monitor, make sure that everything's on track or would you, would you essentially think yeah. you can I set mean, and forget type of thing? What happens in reality is that in the beginning when they start with our system they approve the rates manually right. for the first, I don't know, three to six weeks. Eventually they gain more and more confidence in the algorithms. 
And once they have confidence, they want us to turn on the autopilot. So they don't need to approve the rates. The system automatically sets the rates on their behalf. But then it will set the rates within the boundaries that are set by the human. So the revenue manager tells the system, okay, you're free to set the rates within this range. If you want to go outside the range, I need to manually approve it. So in the beginning, when they run with the autopilot, they set a fairly tight range, you know, because they want to feel confident, right? So, but down the road, that range goes wider and wider and wider. Uh, and the more, the higher degree of freedom you give to the system, the better it will be able to perform. So, yeah, so that's how it is. It's a gradual process to build trust. Right, right. Now, the revenue management space is an extremely competitive area at the moment in our industry. What do you think is necessary to stand companies like yourselves apart from the competition? What, what are the elements that are critical that revenue management systems must have and, and what are the things that stand you from everybody else or stand you apart from everybody else? One of them that has been extremely successful for us so far and which was from day one has been a very imperative uh, for our DNA is ease of use. So for instance, uh, I mean, so even if we do a lot of sophisticated things, they happen under the hood, so to speak. Um, but uh, you don't need to have a lot of human intervention to do, do these price price uh, settings. And on that note as well, which is extremely important, I think, when we're looking at different revenue uh, revenue management providers, is the true essence of machine learning. Because the thing with machine learning, which is quite phenomenal, is that it we heard early on that no one can build an algorithm to, uh, to all floor markets and all sizes of hotels. And, uh, and we said, uh, well, we think you are wrong. Uh, the reason for this is machine learning. Because it's one thing if you have a rule-based algorithm, because then that means that if, as long as you have the same input of data, you always get the same output, a, a certain output. Uh, but with machine learning, that is not true, because you can actually have the same input and the output is changing because it learns over time and it, it behaves differently. And why is this important? Well, because then you can put this algorithm in any market and it learns the market, it learns the hotel, it learns the performance of that unique hotel. So we don't need to craft a specific algorithm to each and every hotel and we don't have one algorithm that everyone needs to adopt to. And that creates scalability. Um, so, uh, and that is also uh, which is important because there are a lot of rule-based algorithms out there, um, uh, and I think that is part of the success as well with, with Atomize. Right. Now, every algorithm needs a certain amount of time before it can get to a stage that you were just explaining. What's the typical time frame with your algorithm? Uh, in this case, I would say it's not about so much about the time frame. It's more about the amount of data right. that you have. Yeah. Yeah. So let's put it this way. If we have one year of historical data, if you've been running with the same PMS for a year and your data quality is good, then we could, you know, once we have set it up, it's fully reliable from day one. Right. But then the revenue manager might, you know, have slightly different IDs on certain dates. Then we can tweak in the back end and push the algorithm in, in different directions, so to speak. Yeah. But it will give very good recommendations from day one as long as we have enough data, as long as the data quality is good enough. Right, right, right. So, but as Alex said, over time it learns more and more. The more data we get, the more it learns. And from your experience working with your customers already, the hoteliers that you've been working with, how, how have you found their adaptation to the technology? And Are they supportive of it? Are they embracing it? Or is there an element of Skepticism. Yeah, I, I think from my experience, I mean, uh, especially when we launched Atomize, was everyone was quite skeptical. Yeah. So in the beginning, we, we said like, so, so, so we, on, we we believe in Atomize, obviously. So uh, we offered free trials in the beginning. We don't do that anymore because it doesn't make sense. Uh, just to prove our point. Uh, and there, I mean, there are those clients that started in that really skeptical phase when they started with Atomize, like, okay, I will try it then and let's see how it goes. And we have seen how they have, because we can measure also how much, how many price points they accept, acceptance rates. So it has increased, and many of these are today, today are on full autopilot. So it's been a, through this trust journey that they've yeah. explained earlier. Uh, but those, they were really skeptical in the beginning, but now, I mean, and, and, and that's the, 
the best thing without words, right? Yeah. Where you can really build trust over time, and, and then you realize they're sitting with something that actually is mastering data. Everything can see patterns that not the human eye can, can ever do. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's quite phenomenal. Yeah. Uh, I got a similar question uh, at the conference uh, last week in a discussion panel on AI, and one of the questions was is AI, you know, is the te technology mature enough to handle the pricing of a hotel? And, you know, to me that question doesn't really make sense. Look at other in industries, like the whole ad tech industry. For the last 15 years, 100% of their revenues have been managed by artificial intelligence. Yeah. For 15 years. Yeah. And, you know, the best doctor in the world in terms of identifying tumors, that's an AI system. The best fighter pilot, that's an AI system. The best chess player, AI system. The best Go player, AI system. The best poker player, an AI system. What on earth makes you think that AI is not capable of setting prices of your hotel? You know, the technology is ready. It's the hotel industry that just need to realize that, okay, I should focus on the strategic part, not yeah, right. on the tactical yeah, part. It's a, good, it's a good point, and it kind of leads to my next question in terms of what do you feel would be the best ways for hotel students who are coming into the industry to work, as well as existing hotel operators, so that they can better understand that side of the technology, so it doesn't, there's that, that friction is gone in terms of that, that element of skepticism. I, I would say the best advice is be curious, be constantly learning, you know, constantly reading up on new technologies. Make sure you focus on learning good strategies for, for operating hotel. Yeah. Uh, but co be consistently curious. That's my number one advice. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of marketplaces available now in, in our space, in our industry. Um, are you guys associated to any marketplaces? The reason why I'm asking is how can the hoteliers find Atomize outside of going directly to your sales channels? Is there, are there other options that they can come into you? Well, I mean, we are in the marketplaces for the specific uh, PMSs, right? right. Like uh, Protel, Muse, yeah. Clock and so on yeah. and so forth. Uh, but in our line of business, data quality is everything. So that means we cannot really connect through some type of aggregator. We need the detailed information about every single reservation, every single cancellation and so on and so forth. We need every li tiny little detail about it in order to do the best possible job. Yeah. So we cannot really connect through aggregators yeah. because by then, once the information reached that level, it's aggregated, it's not detailed anymore, uh, so it won't work. Right. Uh, and there's no revenue management system in the world that could do a good job on, on aggregated uh, information. It's right. impossible. Based on your experience now from starting Atomize, as well as your history within startups, what would be some of the, the main tips that you would give someone coming into the industry that wanted to start a tech company, not necessarily revenue management tech, but any tech, what would be the key points that you would say, okay, we've done this before, from our experience, watch out for X, Y, and Z. My advice would be, if you're looking to get into the hospitality industry, just do it, because I've never seen an industry with so nice people, you know? We're meeting potential customers and they are buying us drinks. It's not us buying them drinks. That, that has never happened before. Yeah, I mean, it has ne that never ever happened in the ad tech industry. I, was, I spent 12 years of my life in the ad tech industry. Not once would a potential customer buy me a drink. You know, because that was a different business. Here, everyone is so friendly. So if you're thinking about getting into the hospitality industry, just do it, you know, I just love it. Yeah, yeah. So, but what, what would be some of the pitfalls that they should be aware of as well? Because it is challenging, it's I quite difficult. Just go for it, if you, have, you think you have a good idea, regardless of whatever you're doing. I mean, you need to commit to it and, and go all in. And there is no, never look back, yeah. sort of, yeah. and uh, have fun, because it's, it's, it's cliche almost, right? But it, it's really about if you want to do be the best in whatever sector you are doing a startup, yeah. you better go all in. You yeah. can't do half in. Yeah. 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 Now, and also expect things to take a lot longer time than you could 
possibly imagine. You know? But that's always how it is with a startup. That's not specific for this industry, yeah. but yeah. Yeah. things take time. Yeah, they do. Yeah. Good. And also, we're coming towards the end of the year now, 2019. We've had a fairly, um, I'd say, active year in our industry. There's been a lot of announcements, a lot of big things happening. What do you see is, that's already happened this year that was really significant in our industry that made you go, oh, that's interesting, or what was it that kind of stuck out for you? I would say for us, the big thing is the real-time optimization. Yeah. I mean, that's an industry first. Yeah. Uh, and as I said before, I mean, the logic behind that one is that the world is happening in real time. It's not happening in eight hour batches, right? It's yeah. happening by the second. Hence your prices need to be in real time yeah. because that's how the world is uh, operating today. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, that is a major one for us, I would say. Okay, good. And moving into 2020, what do you think will happen mostly in 2020? What, what do you think is the future holding for us next year? Uh, we have, we, yeah, we already have some, some exciting products. Mm -hmm. uh, so we started to, to open the door for, for uh, total profit management mm -hmm. so uh, and that's quite exciting uh, but then I think also in terms of total re uh, revenue management so also including now, now we've been sort of working a lot of with the setting rates uh, but to also include uh, other revenue streams uh, is interesting but that, then also in terms of doing the profit management to actually mm -hmm. maximize profit rather than revenue yeah. is, uh, is uh, the one that does that will be mastering the space out there. Yeah, I'm certain. Good. All right, gentlemen. Thank you so much for thank joining you. us today. Thank I really you. appreciate it. It's been Good great. to talk to you. Thank you. Nice Likewise. to meet you. Likewise. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks for watching, folks. That's all for now. It's bye bye from WTM, and we'll see you around soon. Don't forget to download our apps. Uh, check us out online. Uh, we're all there. Everything's there. So make sure you you watch all of this amazing content and you'll hear from folks like these. Thanks very much. Bye for now. Bye. Bye.